Mr. Misfit. Hey everybody, welcome back. Tomiko's in the house. I'm here. He's in the house. I'm We're back. back, and we are today kind of sort of continuing the mini series sort of thing that we, we do every year. So you don't have any idea about this either. I don't. But one of the things that we accidentally started doing, because everything that we have ended up doing that has become kind of the traditional thing here has been an accident, <laughs> is that from end of january to end of february we end up doing somewhat of a little mini series dealing with stuff so the first year we did it we were talking about historical stuff so we were talking about the history of the church we were talking about history in general we were talking this is where we actually introduced cold war theology to people once we discovered that we apparently came up with the term all that stuff Last year, we did one focused in on abusive theology. So we looked at patriarchy. We looked at the caste system in India. We looked at Christian nationalism. We looked at slaveholder theology, all that stuff. This year, we are kind of looking at these misunderstandings or impossible to understand is more of how I hear people describe it. Ideas within the church. So... Last week, we did the live stream with the guys, with Ant, with Joe, and we are talking about the actual idea of pastors and pastoral trust and what all that looks like. Next week, Brandon is going to be in, and we're going to be talking about the idea of the misunderstanding of what it actually means to have wisdom. Mm -hmm. The following week, or weeks, depending on schedules, is when we're going to have Joel Bowman and Dr. Hudson back. Hopefully together, maybe separate depending on schedules. And we're going to be looking at things like worldview and ecclesiology and everything else. So with all of that, today we're continuing in that little mini series and we're looking at something that shouldn't be controversial and should be easily understood, but apparently is not. Here we go. Here we go. So those of you that follow me on X Twitter, whatever you want to call it. I still call it Twitter. Yeah, most people still do. But, you know, <laughs> apparently you can technically get sued for calling it Twitter still is what I've heard. So really? The, the, Don't sue me. I'm broke. The, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's that's part of why you're with us. <laughs> the, the app formerly known as Twitter. There was a tweet I put out a few weeks ago that should not have been controversial. But yet it was. Very much unexpectedly was. We don't know why it was, but we kind of have a feeling we do know why it was. And that's part of what we're going to talk about today. So the the tweet that I had posted simply said, Christians don't have enemies. We have neighbors. Should not be a controversial statement at all, but it was. So this is what my argument actually was. No enemies for Christians, just neighbors and that is coming out of leviticus 19 and micah 6 and matthew 22 and mark 12 and luke 10 and john 13 yeah neighbors love god love neighbor that is the greatest commandments that is what all of the other commandments are built off of top two top two no questions asked that's it and in the rest of the argument i also had to clarify that neighbors in scripture have no qualifiers yeah it's everybody that's again luke 10 29 literally answers that question because yeah, this is this is why i said luke 10 29 i i argue is the most quoted without being realized as quoted verse in all of the bible within america especially but western civilization yeah yeah. you know luke 10 29 i know it not by heart though what is it I don't know by heart. Okay. Let's pull it out. What's good? Well, Luke 10, 29. Right Luke 10, 29. This is where, and the rich, and the, the man trying to justify himself yeah. said, who is my neighbor? Yeah. Key phrase to justify himself. Yep. And then ask the question, who is my neighbor? And Jesus answers good with Samaritan. the good Samaritan. <laughs> 
in Story which, time. <laughs> in which the Good Samaritan, Jesus lays out pretty clearly that everybody is your neighbor. neighbor. It doesn't matter if they are a different race. It doesn't matter. Their economic class does not matter. Their religion does not matter. No. None of it matters. Even to the point that he he uses Samaritan talking to fellow Jews or Judeans, whatever, and they hated Samaritans. And and in the story, <laughs> two Jews walk past. Yeah. The Samaritan picks the man up. And the Samaritan did the good deed. And the Samaritan also went above and beyond. Went above and beyond to the point where he doesn't even know Housed how him. much it's going to cost him. How's them? But he finances it anyway. Yeah. And he does all of this more so because of the fact that neighbor, the only identifier we have with neighbor is Amago Dei. Yeah. There's so much to that that's like And it shouldn't be controversial. It shouldn't this be. is basic Christianity, yeah. but yet basic, very basic. But yet it got this huge uproar. And specifically, there were two arguments against. One of them is a more understandable argument. And that's the one we're going to spend the most time on. The other argument we'll, we'll get to. And you'll see why I want to bang my head into the wall when we get to it. Yeah. So the first argument against it is that their argument is based out of Matthew 5 and Luke 6, which is the mm -hmm. Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. If you didn't know, Luke 6 is the exact same sermon as Matthew 5 through 7. Yeah. Just much shorter, and Luke is a little bit more blunt and brutal with his points. Yeah. So their arguments are based out of Matthew 5, verses 38 through 48, and Luke 6, verses 27 through 36. And the main thing that they're arguing within those passages is the fact that Jesus tells us to do what? Love our neighbors, not our neighbors, love our enemies. Enemies, yeah, you love your enemies, yeah. So, if we have to love our enemies, yeah. how can we say we don't have enemies? Right, right. So, that the is the words right there. It has to be that. <laughs> that is the argument we're going to unpack. So, we're going to start out by reading these passages and specifically yeah. we're going to start out just by reading Matthew five and then we'll get to Luke six in a minute. Cause there's a reason why we're saving Luke six till for, for a second here. So Matthew five verses 38 through 48. All right. So when we're starting much earlier on in the passage than what they argue, but it's important for us to start here and you'll see why as we go. So Matthew five, 38 through 48. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, don't resist an evil do doer. On the contrary, if anyone slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. As for the one who wants to sue you and take away your shirt, let him have your coat as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, go, go with him too. Give to the one who asks you and don't turn, turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be children of your father in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and send rain, sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous or snow in our case. For if you love those who love you, what reward will you have? Don't even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what are you doing out of the ordinary? Don't even the Gentiles do the same. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. Amen. So, of the word be the truth. Love your enemies. Yeah. Is one of the central themes here. Yep. But it's connected to a lot of other themes within the same little section of the sermon. Now, slight add if you go to the Minister Misfits blog, you'll see the one with the little pig on it, mm -hmm. which was dealing with the one of the later parts of the sermon in Matthew seven, where we kind of not rip apart. We kind of reverse the way that we look at the phrase, don't cast your pearls before swine, because right. that phrase is used all the time, but disconnected <laughs> from the rest of the passage, which is all about self self uh, reflection, reflection. An examination and specifically not letting yourself be blind. Yeah. Now, 
this is the same idea in terms of the connectiveness in the Sermon on the Mount that we need to actually apply when we start talking about the idea of loving our enemies. Yeah. Where within the sermon are we dealing with this, this idea of love, love your enemies? So we had, point of the sermon are we at? We're we're pretty so close to the beginning because still in the, yeah he's still cooking he's 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 building up he's given us the beatitudes yep and a lot of it is talking about what the nature of the kingdom is yeah upside he's down upside down it's 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 love it's you know blessed are the poor in spirit blessed basically blessed are the people who are like disregarded forgotten about abandoned or segregated and blessed are those people and they'll inherit the kingdom. And then he goes from that into redefining yeah. murder and adultery yeah. from physical actions to actions of the heart, yeah. right? It's all about the heart. Yeah. The law, teacher, teaching the point of the law, um, you know, the, the physical nature that's listed out in, in Leviticus and, and taking it and my intentions were actually always this. And it, and the, the, the phrase you used is both is is a double meaning here for intention because we're yeah. talking both this was the intent of what God had laid down. Yep. And that both of these sins are actually sins of intent. Yeah. Not just sins of action. Right. And then he continues that idea yeah. into the ideas of divorce. Yep. And then lying. So yeah. don't take an oath you can't keep. Tell mm -hmm. the truth. And so then he goes into this idea of going the second mile and loving your enemies. Yep. But the phrase love your enemies is connected with what other phrase? Break it down for me. Verse, I lost it, 44. I tell you, love your enemies and? Pray for those who persecute you. So who is our enemy? It is those that? Persecute us persecute us yeah and specifically those that are persecuting us for verse 43 of loving our neighbor yeah because jesus will say multiple times throughout the gospels that yeah. persecution is not about us mm -mm. persecution is about him. him they hated me first so the idea of loving our enemies is not about our relationship with other people. No. It's about the other people's relationship with, with Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. You don't got beef with me. You got beef with him. <laughs> because if you have beef with somebody, <laughs> we just have to scroll up a little bit. That's it. Because what is the definition of murder that Jesus just laid down? Hating somebody. somebody in your heart. Already. In your heart, making somebody your enemy. Your enemy, yep. This is not complicated. No, it's not. When we actually read the passage, it's not complicated. It's not controversial. This is even more clear. No opinions, just Bible. Right. <laughs> go. Let's go to Luke 6, because it, it's even more clear in the way that Luke writes it out. So Luke 6, verses 27 through 36. Again, same, exact same sermon. You know, that's why it's so, like, crucial to... I know like a lot of Bibles have like these subheadings and stuff right. like that. That's why it's so crucial to just like read the text because the 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 conversations continue are continuing even though the chapter ended. Right. Shout, <laughs> you know, shout out to Hunka, his big phrase, yeah. dangers of casual reading. Right, 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 right. That is what we're dealing with with a lot of these sort of concepts. It'll change the narrative if you if you stop and like, oh yeah, it's a chapter break, so it must be a new thought. Like, and nah. and the big thing you said there was narrative, because these it. things are not we. There's both the narrative and the bad sense and the good sense in what we're saying here, yeah. because the narrative that is laid out is that we break this up into chapters, and so love your enemies means we have enemies, and we don't worry about what Jesus just said. Right. But this is one long, one long oral yeah. narrative sermon. He's building it up. In which Jesus yeah. has already laid out, you have heard it said, but I say. Yeah. And then he gives specific examples with murder, dealing with your heart, with yeah. adultery, dealing with your heart, 
with truth telling dealing with your, your heart. heart. It's all been the heart posture. And now he gets into the fact that we aren't supposed to hate anyone. Yeah. We love our enemies because they are our neighbor. Yeah. And this is what we see. It's, a, it's much clearer even in Luke chapter 6. So Luke 6 is a little bit different than Matthew 5. We have the Beatitudes. Yeah. Much more in a physical sense. Mm -hmm. He then also gives us woe to the opposite of the Beatitudes. Yeah. And then we get into the ideas of loving our enemies. So this is verse 27. But I say to you who listen, love your enemies, do what is good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If anyone hits you on the cheek, offer the other also. And if anyone takes away your coat, don't hold back your shirt either. Give to everyone who asks you from ask ask you. And from someone who takes your things, don't ask for them back. Just as you want others to do for you, do the same for them. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Yeah. Even sinners love those who love them. If you do what is good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners and to be repaid in full. But love your enemies, do what is good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Then your reward will be great, and you will be the children of the Most High, for he is gracious to the ungrateful and evil. Be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. Yeah. Matthew, there was a little bit of contrast of, yeah. you've heard it said, mm -hmm. but I tell you. He's pointing back to the Old Testament. Because Matthew yeah. was written to a much more Jewish audience. Yeah, exactly. Luke is not. Mm -mm. So Luke's just laying it straight, straight out. Straight out. Love your enemies. Yeah. But again, what who is who is tied to the idea of enemies here? He says, love your enemies, those that hate you. Yeah, those that hate you. Those that curse you. Yep. Those that mistreat you. Those that hurt you. Those that hit you. Those that take away your things. Yep. And those that are not going to be nice to you in return. Yeah. It's There's, a them thing. It's a them. It's not us. It's not us. It's about their it's them. attitude and heart. Yeah. That is why we are labeled as enemy. Yeah. And you know what's even crazier is that, like, especially in Luke's uh, gospel, how it he says, you know, even sinners do this. Right. And, like, people, people will um, bring up the idea, well, you don't have to be um a christian to be kind you you're exactly right like, i don't i don't it always frustrates me with the with the believers to say like you can only be kind like nah like anyone can do this like that's why jesus is laying out like there's a difference between us and as you you know what i'm saying you walking with the holy spirit like you'll 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 step into those differences and they're not coming from like the similar behaviors they're coming from this attitude that Christ is like, yo, like, I know that the rest of the world's already doing this. I'm actually asking you to like go, go one a step, step further. further. Because <laughs> see, we are operating with a renewed mind. Yeah. And so our outlook has to be different. It's always further. And this is part of where all why we can say we can understand the Matthew 5, Luke 6 arguments. Yep. Because when we aren't viewing the world as the fact that we view the world differently. Yeah. It's not going to make sense. The idea of loving your enemies is an action of not sense. having them. Yeah. Because like Jesus says, yeah, even the sinners will love each other until it's no longer going to benefit them. Yeah. That's what he says. Yeah. Kindness in the world's sense is not the same kindness we see as a fruit of the spirit. Yep. The fruit of the spirit kindness is one that cannot be done unless you are a Christian. Yeah, can be done. Because it's tied to all of the other fruits. All, and, and that and it goes back into like just because the chapter broke doesn't mean the <laughs> idea broke. So all the fruits are 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 a oneness in in Christ. And so and so my kindness is tied to my long suffering. Yes. And my patience is is tied to goodness. And like these things are intertwined and they're not like we we isolate them 
Um, and it's good to like do word studies and stuff like well, that. Well, and that's but. part of why, you know, shout out to next week. That's part of why Brian and I have been walking through the fruits of the spirit. And people yeah. keep saying you're not doing the fruits of the spirit because we include things like contentment <sighs> and thankfulness <sighs> and wisdom <sighs> and all these other things because of the fact that contentment is joy and yeah. love and peace and patience all tied together and yeah. long suffering all tied together. All these different yeah. things, they're all tied together wisdom that we're going to talk about next week is patience and joy and love all tied together. Yeah. All of these different things, when we use the same word in English, you know, this is part of why, you know, the joke that Brian always do is that, you know, we always go to Webster's to start because we have to understand what people think it means. Yeah. Because there's a part of it that normally is sort of right. Yeah. But then the rest of it is wrong. Yeah. Because they don't have the spirit. Man, 99% truth is a full lie. Exactly, which is part of what Jesus <laughs> says in Matthew 5. We're back to Matthew 5. But speaking of word studies, we do need to do a little bit on here because, again, yeah. this goes to show that we don't understand what it is we are even saying when we are arguing that we are supposed to have enemies. So the word enemies in the Greek is ekstros, mm -hmm. which means someone openly hostile. Mm-hmm animated by deep-seated hatred or irreconcilable hostility out of a personal hatred bent on inflicting harm. Mm. Again, with this definition, who is it that actually is the one making enemies? Them. Them. Not us. Because we shouldn't hate anybody. <laughs> because the whole idea is the fact that the word it, so or what commanded saying, not to hit anybody. What it's saying is to <laughs> love your openly hostile, deep-seated, irreconcil irreconcilable, personal yeah. hatred yep. towards you. Yeah. The person that has these things is the one that is labeled as enemy, mm -hmm. yep. and we are called to love them love instead of do what they are doing back to us. Right. Which is what we just saw in Luke You've 6. Heard it eye for an eye, but I tell you, right? Back to Matthew. <laughs> the other place that we see the word enemy show up, because again, that part of it, once you actually break it down and actually read it in context, instead of just saying, Well, we're told to love our enemy, so go do it. Yeah. Because again, that's that's kind of how it's taught to kids in yeah. a lot of ways. It's just love your enemies because it's really hard to sit down and explain. Even when that kid punches you in the face, yeah, you love them, yeah, because they are still your neighbor, yeah, as opposed to saying, No, we don't hit back yeah. because we love everybody, including those that are our enemies, yeah. Which for kids, it's understandable to have to break it down that way, yeah. But once you hit middle school. This concept, it should be one that we can grasp. Yeah. Especially if discipleship has it's been happening, happening the whole time. Yeah. Which is a, another discussion. Yeah. So the other place it, that it gets argued a little bit from the same idea of Matthew 5 and 6 is the idea of, well, if they are enemies of Jesus, which is what we're saying is the thing that they yeah. have named Jesus as their enemy, who are actually the enemies of God? Because we've got to have an enemy somewhere. So we are allowed to have enemies, the enemies of God. So let's go after them. Okay. Let's point them out. The enemies of God lifted in scripture. Satan, Satan's minions, the demons. Yep. Antichrist. Right. And there is an S on there because there are multiple, multiple antichrists. antichrists. The big A antichrist. Yeah. All of the beasts, which there are a lot of beasts. So many beasts. And then this is specifically out of Philippians 3, and this is the one we need to spend a little time on. Those that their end is their destruction, their God is their stomach, their glory is their shame, and they are focused on earthly things. Yeah. That's Philippians 3.18 for those that don't know. Even though we, I love, I quote this one a lot because the God is their stomach is exactly what we're dealing with in Luke 6. But the, the phrase that we see there is, they are enemies of the cross. Yeah. And so their end is their destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is their shame. And they're focused on earthly things. They are enemies of the cross. They're enemies of Christ. 
their end is destruction. That's the whole idea of, of hell and judgment. Their God is their stomach. That's what Luke highlights in his version of the Beatitudes and the woes as far as woes to the rich and the wealthy and the and the yeah. fool because their God is their stomach. Their glory is their shame. This is what we see all throughout Scripture. If you try to raise yourself up, yeah, you will be, be humbled. humbled. Those that are humbled, God will, will raise up. Yeah. They're focused on earthly things. This yeah. is part of what Paul has already dealt with in multiple other letters. This focus on things above. Yep. Focus on beautiful, perfect, yeah. lovely things, not the things of the world. Does that mean that if they are enemies of God, hmm. that they are our enemies now? In terms of where right. we make them our enemy. Right. Are we making our own enemies? So, yeah. Obviously, we're not talking about the supernatural ones that were listed. Now yeah. we're just focusing on that last one for People. a little bit. People. What are we supposed to do if scripture labels them as the enemy? Yeah. Does that mean that we now have an enemy? And so our thesis statement is wrong again. <laughs> what do you think? Here, here, here's what I'll start off with just to, just to kick it off. Um, again, um, all of scripture is intertwined, all of it. And so it's like this one big narrative from Genesis to Revelation building on top of each other, uh, all about Jesus Christ. And so and we're talking about enemy specifically. We talked about where the argument started at. That's where we started the conversation, Matthew 5 and 6 and then Luke 6. We started the conversation about enemies. Now we go to the rest of the Bible, the, the other witnesses, mm -hmm. and to see what they got to say about enemies. And specifically in Philippians right now, um, we got Paul listing out people who chase after worldly things. These people are enemies of the cross. Specifically, they hate Christ. Well, let's start there. Yeah. What does it actually mean to be an enemy of the cross? <sighs> Uh, just off top of my head, um, thinking about what the Bible has to say about people who hate the cross, thinking about what Jesus said, he said, they're going to hate me. They, they're going to hate me. They're surely going to hate you too. Um, to deny the, the, the power of Jesus. To, well, that's, oh. that's different than the cross to be an enemy of the cross. Why would Paul specify here? That they're enemies of the cross, not Christ. Yeah. They're enemies of the cross. Because he we talk about enemies of Christ. Like right. you said, Jesus even says, they are going to hate you because they hate me. Yeah. That's not what Paul says here. He says the cross, yeah. What does it actually mean? What do you think? Well, hmm. Shows they're really enemies of the cross of Christ. Well, hmm. I don't know what angle you're going for. <laughs> well, but... let's let's just like look at what. Well, first, what is the cross? We'll start with that. What is the cross? The cross the, represents the, what? The cross represents his 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 death. Our his death, which was about what? Our sanctification. He he he's, he's the sacrificial lamb. Sacrifice. He, yeah, for our sins. Um, for, for all of humanity. It's about sacrifice, um, it's about humility, yeah. atonement, all love. those things. Look, yep, yeah. the joy of the for for the the joy set before him, which allowed him to endure the cross. Endurance um, and endurance. joy yeah. are big ones because yeah. when we look at the cross, yeah. and we see Jesus, mm -hmm. that's one part of the cross. Yeah, but there's also another side of this because what does Jesus tell us to do? We're supposed to pick up your cross, take up our cross every day and follow him. and deny take, yourself, pick up your cross, then follow me. And so now we've got the cross as denial yeah. of self. Denial of self, yeah. It's about sacrifice. Yeah. It's about humility. Yeah. It's about loving others. It's, it's also about, about nakedness, too. Nakedness, yeah. sh you know, ex exposing, shame. exposing, exposing shame. shame. Yeah. Now look at again what Paul describes as the enemies of the cross. Yeah. Their end is destruction. Destruction, not victory. No, nah, destruction. Destruction. Yeah. 
Yeah. Their God is their stomach. Yeah. They want to be full. And what did Jesus already tell us about those that want to be full? They will be hungry. Hungry. They want to brag about their shameful things. Their the glory is, is their shame, yeah. as opposed to the cross being the glory yeah. that has taken my shame yeah, away. It's taken it away. It's the opposite things. It's a, it's a it's an opposing, it's opposing um, ideas. Um, They're focused on worldly things and not things above. Not things above. Not yeah. a renewed mind that takes us to the renewed. will of Christ. This is Romans twelve two, right? Yeah. We are we are transformed by the renewed. renewing of our mind towards the will of Christ. And the will of Christ yeah. was what, like you said, it was the joy that was things. set before him. It was yeah. what drove him to the cross. Yeah. So when we talk about being enemies of the cross, yeah. it's not us. No. It's not even necessarily Jesus. It is... What it's representing. It's the lifestyle yeah. that Christians are called to. They hate it. Because they don't, it's... Want to, they don't want their shame taken. They want their stomachs to be filled. They want to exalt themselves. They want they don't want they don't want the joy from the Lord because it's too hard. They don't want to deny themselves. I want to feed myself. This it's it's the exact opposite. It's and that's where it becomes a little bit concerning yeah. when we actually read it this way. Yeah. When we look at some of the responses to these ideas of humility and loving our neighbors. I just take a second to know that Andrew just walked me. <laughs> he just walked me through this text so that I could I could get it out. It, this, let's just I'm just pointing that out there, man. It's a, it's a real teacher right here. You, he just walked me to what I already knew. He walked me through it. He's like, hey, no, we're going to take some baby steps. This, I'm just pointing that I'm out. I'm being man. nice to you He's right tough. now. You're still He's new. Tough. You're still new. <laughs> he just ask, walked me. <laughs> ask, Brandon, ask Brandon what happens after you've been here a year. So, you know, this is, this is what the text says. Yeah, yeah. But we don't read it this way. No. Nah. Because reading this way requires us to do everything that we just talked about. Yeah. And that is where we get into some of these issues as far as why we feel like we need to have an enemy. Yeah. Because this goes back to even our ideas on what the gospel actually is. Yeah. We talked about this a little bit in the live stream with, with Joe and when with Joe and Ann. The idea of us versus them. Yeah. Enemies. Is something that, for whatever reason, we always are reading into everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I had the sound soundboard working at the moment to cue up the idea. You know, this is what this is the whole thing that uh, Vader says. One of his first lines as Vader is, "If you're not with me, then you're my enemy." Yeah, it's always us versus them. Yeah, and this is part of how we read and teach the gospel within our context when we don't understand what it is that we just talked about, even mm -hmm. though it's basic Christianity. Like we yeah. said, this is basic stuff. We don't teach it because us versus them is the basis of the hell centric gospel. Yeah. Someone has to be in hell burning in order for the gospel to make sense to me. And it's not the case. That's not the case at all. That's what Romans tells us is yeah. that God's desire is, or first Timothy tells yeah. us, God's desire is that all will oh, be saved. Oh. That is the desire. That's desire. It doesn't mean they're all going to come. It doesn't That's mean his, it's all going to come. That's desire, though. That's the desire of his heart. And it also goes into, like, you know, I know a lot of people argue, like, well, God doesn't love everybody because his, his love sounds conditional or his love doesn't sound like it's for everyone. If he is it, not loving everybody, it becomes conditional. Right. Because how do you get on the list then? Exactly. That that would mean that his grace isn't even sufficient for you because you would have to do something to earn his love. And we know, oh, that's a bar. And we Holy Spirit cook. And he, we know why scripture says, bro, there, there's, there's nothing you could do. In fact, your works are filthy rags to the Lord, man. It's, it's, this is all a free gift by the grace of God that you've even received salvation through faith alone. It's a, it's a work by God inside of you to even draw near to it's him. a renewed mind it's a re there's the bible says there's nothing in you that wants to even know god there's nothing because <laughs> by nature we are all enemies of the we're, cross we're, and, and this is where by nature 
the second argument that was much more random, but unfortunately I understand why it got connected. Yeah. And that is the argument we're going to tear apart right after this break. Yeah. We'll be right back. What's up, everybody? Joe here from Buddy Walk with Jesus. Buddy Walk with Jesus is a show designed to delve deep into the intimate reality of God's present kingdom through raw and honest conversations. And I'd like to invite you guys to join us as we continue on our journey through the book of Matthew. Whether you start from the beginning or jump in at the latest episode, we'd love to have you along for the ride as we seek to unpack the heart of God through the personhood of Jesus. You can find Buddy Walk with Jesus anywhere where you can find podcasts, including our newest home over on YouTube podcasts. You can also head on over to facebook.com slash buddy walk with Jesus engage with me over there as well as our community group at the buddy walk community. Remember two very important things that you are prayed for and you are loved deeply. Peace y'all. Today's a great day to start your own podcast. Whether you're looking for a new marketing channel, have a message you want to share with the world or just think it would be fun to have your own talk show, podcasting is an easy, inexpensive, and fun way to expand your online reach. Buzzsprout is hands down the easiest and best way to launch, promote, and track your podcast. Your show can be online listed on all major platforms within minutes of finishing your first recording. We just switched to Buzzsprout for Season 2 and have immediately noticed the difference. With Buzzsprout, you get a great-looking podcast website, audio players that you can drop into your websites, detailed analytics to see how people are listening, tools to promote your episodes, and more. Podcasting isn't hard when you have the right partners, and Buzzsprout and the Misfits want to help you get started. Contact us for a free consultation call, and then visit our affiliate link to get started with Buzzsprout. Using this link not only helps support the Misfits, but it also gets you a $20 Amazon gift card. The teams at Buzzsprout and Ministry Misfits are passionate about helping you succeed. Join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. To find out more, go to www.ministrymisfits.com backslash affiliates. We're back. Hey everybody, we're back. Tomiko's still here. We are still trying to kind of sort through why this is even controversial or needed. Yeah. Apparently it is. So we've been talking about enemies. We've already highlighted the fact that everything that we always hear about enemies is not what scripture says. Yeah. And that what scripture actually tells us is that Christians don't have enemies. We have neighbors. And that the enemies that we love are those that consider us their enemies, not vice versa. It's a them thing. It's a them thing, not an us thing, even though in part of what we're saying is that it's not us versus them. But in this case, that's what it is. Them versus the cross. Yes. (laughs) So now we're getting into the other argument that stemmed out of the that quote. Which seemed very random because it had nothing to do with what I was actually talking about, but it does highlight part of why this whole thing becomes controversial. It was an argument about violence and specifically about justifiable violence. Yeah. And it really stemmed out of a misunderstanding on their part as far as the Imago Dei and the term neighbor. Yeah. And the term enemies. Because this is the the thing, the call that we have that we just read, all of them is to love, right? Yeah. Love your neighbor, love your enemies. No calls to hatred. It's all just love. And the call is to be Christ-like and the fruits of the spirit, which include love. Yep. But the problem comes in 
when you have people that do not view uh, all of mankind as Imago Dei. It's hard for a lot of people. So the first argument that was presented is that only Christians are made in the image of God. The argument they're trying to make is coming out of the idea that mankind was made in God's image in Genesis 1 and right. Genesis 2. But then in Genesis 3, we lost that image. No. No is the correct answer. <laughs> the reason it, that it... Why is that the correct answer? It's the correct answer because, yes, we f we only fell from that perfect relationship with the heavenly father that's what we fell from we didn't we didn't lose our image bearer likeness to god we did not lose that we lost our relationship hence why jesus came to restore that relationship um hence why they had to have his temple and these animal sacrifices throughout the old testament like that's why those things were put in place. But if if you were if we lost the Imago Dei, yeah, there would be no chance of reconciliation. No, none at all. There would have been no purpose for trying to stay pure. Yep. For the sacrifices, for any of it, because yep. if the Imago Dei was lost, yeah, all of our purpose is gone. There's none. And so that that's the the main issue right there is that yeah. you can't say that you've lost the Imago Dei. No. Because we didn't take we didn't put it on ourselves. We can't take yeah. it away. It's not now, ours. That one is much easier to yeah. deal with and explain. The other one that we've got is the argument that well only Christians are our neighbors. And the argument for that is again coming out of a misunderstanding of multiple ideas. Yeah. So when we look at the Good Samaritan, because again, we already pointed out the fact that Luke 10, 29 is the argument that they're actually making. Well, who mm -hmm. is my neighbor? When you look at the Good Samaritan, we already kind of gave the story. You have a man walking down the road, gets beat up, left for dead. Yep. Priest walks by, Levite walks by. They just keep on walking. Yeah. Samaritan comes by, picks the man up, takes him to a doctor, gets the man treated, pays for all of it, and then tells the man to charge him whatever is left over to keep the man comfortable yeah. and alive until the man can take care of himself. And Jesus finally says, so who who in this situation actually loved their neighbor? Yeah. Is like the one that showed mercy. And Jesus' response is simple. You know what it is? I don't. It's really simple. Go and do that. Man. Right? <laughs> Go and do the same. Go and okay. do the same. So bring the scripture that, back to memory. That's the story. Yeah. This was the argument that was presented when I presented the fact that they were arguing Luke 10 29. Yeah. Said that what the story actually says is that only people that have the chance at belief can be our neighbor because the Samaritans believed in the same God. So therefore they were their neighbor, but yeah. that's why Jesus didn't use a Roman yeah. is because the Romans weren't their neighbors. <laughs> the Romans need to be overthrown. The Romans need routed. Yeah. That's not what scripture says. Mm -mm. That's not even what is presented in the story at all. What was presented in the story was that those that believed the same as the man on the side of the road continued to walk. The one that did not believe the same and the one that was outcasted by the people of the person that was on the side of the road was the one that took him in. Yeah. There is no qualifier for who our neighbor is outside of the Imago Dei. Yeah. So if you get the Imago Dei correct, you will get neighbor correct. Yeah. If you don't get neighbor correct, most likely there's a problem with who you view as made in the image of God. Yeah. It's that simple. 
this is part, and this is going back to last year's miniseries. This is where most abusive theologies come out of is mm-hmm. a misunderstanding of the Imago Dei as a whole. Yeah. Patriarchy does not view women as made in the image of God. Slaveholder theology does not view yeah. people of color yep. and made in the image of God. That's true. The caste system in India does not view certain members of society yep. as made in the image of God. Christian nationalism does not view anybody that is not part of their fascism as made in the image of God. Yeah. It's that simple. Sad. But yet it still continues to be taught in bits and pieces throughout the way that at least American Western Christianity is taught Mm -hmm. because there's still bits and pieces of the slaveholder theology holding on. There's still bits and pieces of women aren't equal holding on. There are still all these little bits and pieces as far as even socioeconomic status is a dictator of whether or not I treat you the way I treat you. Yeah. All of these different things are still there. And that becomes, it's important all the time because again, that affects just the relationships you have in general. Yeah. But it becomes even bigger when you start to throw in the other part of their argument towards justified violence. Mm -hmm. Because the arguments that, and we'll get to why the argument itself is a sign that you may need to go talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. We'll do that in a minute. You need help. You need help. But. The arguments that were presented, one was just war theory, which we've talked about before. Bray and I did it when we talked about ethics and everything else. And then also what was presented was the idea of self-defense and mass shootings. Which, again, we've talked about the Second Amendment on this show as well before. And you can go back and listen to that. We may get into it a little bit here. But the argument was that the moment somebody decides that they are going to harm another person, they have forfeited their Amago Dei rights. Mm-hmm. And so now it is the responsibility of loving our actual neighbors to kill the enemy. Mm-hmm. That is the argument that was presented. Wow. There's a lot of problems with that. One is that that's the opposite of what the gospel is, <laughs> right? The gospel is that we try to make ourselves God. We even tried to kill God. And yet God willingly laid his life down Yeah. rather than smite everybody, even though he even makes it clear that he could, could have, have if he wanted, could but have. that is not in his nature to do it. Could have. You say the word. Yes. Say the word. Could have, but he does not yeah. because that is not in his nature. That goes to a point that um, I heard a discussion about and I, I wrestled with it for a while. And I was talking about what's a peacemaker mm-hmm. and, a, and a peacemaker um, is someone who, and correct me if I'm wrong, someone who is he's, he's capable of violence, he's capable of danger, he's capable of harm, but he's choosing peace. He's choosing order. Play it out a little bit more because we said peace is a fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit yeah, fruit so spirit. true peace only can happen if you are. In Christ. In Christ. Flat we just out. said so shout out, shout out Joe Day, Buddy Walk with yeah. Jesus. We just if go back and listen to last week's episode of Buddy Walk with Jesus on yeah. um Esther and social justice. Um, I was on with Tierra Wilson, who's aunt's daughter. Um, and we were we we asked this question: what does it actually mean to be a peacemaker? Because yeah. we were dealing with what was going on in Israel and Palestine right now. Facts. Peace. True peace is a comes fruit from the of Lord the first. spirit. Yep, it comes from the Lord first. So, in order to be a peacemaker, yeah, you have to be in rooted in the Lord. Rooted in the Lord, it has to be an act of yeah. the spirit. Spirit. Yep. And to be a peacemaker is someone that is no longer, yeah, what we just talked about in Philippians three. Right, enemy of the cross. Enemy of the cross, yeah. enemy of sacrifice and yeah. humility and love and laying down our lives. Not because, boasting in evil. <laughs> which is why <laughs> the enemies of the cross end is destruction. Yeah. It's not peace. Yeah. If you do not have the spirit, you cannot truly be have a peace, true peace maker. Yeah. Because, like you said, we are capable of violence. Yeah. But yet, 
we have a renewed renewed mind (laughs) that tells us how we actually can see peace in the world. And the way we see peace in the world is through the gospel. Right. It is not through us. Mm -hmm. It is through the gospel. And this is part of what the argument I actually kept making back to the person was, is that when you have this idea of the only way to stop violence is with more violence, Mm -mm. you are denying the work of the gospel. God, God had, he said, revenge is mine. Revenge is his. Yeah, that's what he said. He got it. We don't have it. We don't. He we don't got need it. it. We don't need. <laughs> because if we needed it, then we're saying we don't trust God to yeah, handle we don't it. Trust grace is, isn't sufficient again. It's not grace, sufficient. It's not sufficient again. And that is the that's bottom the, line of a lot of this stuff because yeah. the call of a Christian is martyrdom. Yeah, it is. It is not defense. Mm-mm. You know, uh, C.S. Lewis puts it in Narnia as far as, you know, when they ask, well, is Aslan safe? Yeah. He's not safe. No. But he's good. Yeah. Aslan doesn't need anybody to defend himself. Mm -mm. He's going to take care of it when it's appropriate for him to take care of it. Yeah. Our call is not to take care of it. It's called to depend on him to take care of it. This is what we see. And this is part of the argument that we make as far as why the Second Amendment I'll ha- I don't know if you've listened to this one or not. I have not. The argument that we made not. is that the Second Amendment is actually antithetical to the to Christianity. Mm-hmm. Because the Second Amendment is about what? Owning weapons. Owning weapons in order to defend, defend against... Yourself. Uh, yeah. Defend yourself. Defend yeah. yourself. Specifically, it's about defending against tyranny. Yeah. What does Jesus say the moment Peter tries to defend against tyranny in Matthew 26? Put your sword away, Put your sword away because if you it's time. Yeah, it's if time. you live by the sword, you die by the sword. You'll die by the sword. Yeah. That is what Jesus Jesus condemns the action of defending yourself against yeah. tyranny with weapons. Yeah. Which pretty much throws out the second amendment. So if you want the full argument, you can go back and listen to that. I'm having to listen episode. to the full argument because he even told him to buy the swords. Well, why is he telling yeah. him to buy the swords? It's in Luke 22. It's about fulfilling the prophecy that yeah. they would be counted among the rebels. Right. Not for yeah. the use. Because oh, no, yeah. The use not of the for weapons. the use. When I, when I bring that right. verse up, I because people are like, he people don't know that verse. You're like, and I'm like, well, you told them to buy swords. And that's the key, right? Yeah, they, they don't know the they, verse. They don't know the verse. And I'm like, yeah, Jesus told them to buy them. They're like, to use weapons. I'm like, no, not to use weapons. Because Jesus already oh. had told them to take up their cross yeah, and die daily. He did. Jesus had already told them that whoever tries to save his life will lose it. it. He already told them to that the greatest love is to lay down your life for somebody. Yeah, he did. Not take someone else's. Mm -mm. He already said in Matthew 5, don't resist the evildoer. Yeah. But instead, love them. Love them. Paul will echo this in Philippians 2, where he says, can consider others more highly, highly than, than yourself. yourself. Yeah. If you consider someone more highly than yourself, you're not going to be seeking out their harm. Yeah, you're going to be seeking out your own harm <laughs> to benefit that person. We yeah, we don't seek harm. We don't seek, we don't seek harm at all. The call of a believer yeah. is martyrdom, it not is. violence. Nope. Because if, you're, if your thinking is kill or be killed, Mm-mm. Congratulations. You're living in fear. You're not just living in fear. You're living in Darwinism. Yeah. <laughs> right? Kill or be killed is survival of the fittest. Yeah. That's Darwinism. The very thing that most Christians are going to tell you disqualifies you from salvation is yeah. evolution, which we can get into another time as far as how that's not a disqualifier. But yeah. you can't tell me that I that someone is disqualified from salvation because they believe in evolution. While you then try to justify survival of the fittest and kill or be killed with a misunderstanding of the Old Testament. Man. People want to be mad at everything. (laughs) And that is the bigger thing, right? (laughs) That's what Jesus says in Matthew 5. Murder begins in the heart. Adultery begins in In the the heart. heart. It's always been a heart. Lying begins in the heart. Divorce begins in the heart. 
all of these things are heart issues as far as the fact that you are wanting to be able to be angry about something. So I'll start with the seed. And when that happens, we see yeah. Paul already has highlighted what happens when that becomes our motivation. Yeah. The end is our destruction. Our God becomes our stomach. Our glory becomes our shame. And we are so focused on earthly things that we miss the reality of the fact that the cross is already empty. Man. He's risen. That is the message of the gospel. Yeah. To deny the idea of loving your neighbor, even the neighbor that wants to kill you, yeah. even the neighbor that wants to cause others harm, is to deny the very gospel message that we preach. You know, it actually, sometimes it, it makes me think because the people who are <laughs> the people who argue against, I guess what you're saying the most seem to me to be the people who like haven't, they haven't even like been faced with something like dangerous. Right. Like they haven't actually been well, persecuted. I they have, they haven't actually received any of this violence that they, that they think might happen to them. And I'm not saying that it isn't possible, but what I am saying is that like it, they're not even in an area. They're not doing any missional things for Jesus that, to put yes. them in that type of like, you know what I'm saying? So there's two parts to this. The second part that you were talking about is 100% the fact is the, that most of the time, the people that are making these arguments are ones that have never actually experienced this for themselves. Yeah, they haven't. But the other part of the argument isn't necessarily the case and that is both in terms of the personal experience as far as the one that was leading the charge against this on yeah. Twitter the other week as well as just the culture that we live in yeah is that the glorification of violence we do love violence doesn't necessarily mean that somebody has never been in a violent situation yeah. the one guy that was arguing against us was a veteran yeah he served in Iraq served in Iraq yeah he has dealt with it. Yeah. And military sense. Right. Though. And and again, this is part of where, and we're going to get into this with other discussions yeah. later on the this spring, as far as the fact that military service is not what we were talking about here. Yes. I'm, yes. Now yes. there is an, a case that can be made for Christians not being in the military, yeah. but it's not one that is a first tier salvation issue. No. Which is part of the other thing we made clear. It's not a first tier issue. Yeah. This is not a, Loving your enemies and loving or loving your neighbors and not having enemies and loving those that consider us enemies is a first tier issue. Yeah. The because other thing love because it's tied. It's not just tied to because, love. It's tied to the gospel as a yeah. whole. Yeah. Cause, cause the, and the reason why I say it's tied to love, which is tied to the gospel, like, you know, it's right. like interlinear. And I'm saying that because like you said earlier, if, if you don't have the love of the father, there, there's no love in you, right? There's, there's no, no love, love in you. And there's no evidence of the Holy spirit. That's that's why I'm saying that there's there's right. no love in yes. you. So you like that's and the other side and so and that and this is part of what you know we we kept having to reiterate to him is yeah. that we weren't saying because he was a veteran that yeah. he was in sin. In fact, that was right. the opposite of what yeah, we were that's saying. That's not the case at all. Are you in military? Like, the that's other, a whole different. A lot of the yeah. other arguments that we see come out are people that are just making the argument to make the argument. They've never dealt with it. They've never even lived in an environment where guns are a would be considered almost a requirement for yeah. for survival. Right. They but they live in a culture in which guns are glorified. Yeah. Where violence is glorified, where the idea of dying as a hero is part of the American way. <laughs> and that is something is is something that we as a church need to be able to speak into in especially these sort of conversations by getting these conversations right. Yeah. Do you know in your study of the early church how the uh, gladiator games ended? I don't know how the gladiator games ended. So the gladiator games in general, you know what they are though, right? Yeah. yeah. Coliseum stuff. Coliseum, yeah. mostly slaves that were trained to be warriors. Yep. They killed each other for the amusement of the people, yep. literal glorification of violence. violence yeah. They stopped after a Christian walked into the arena in the middle of it, 
shouting for them to stop and preaching the gospel. He ended up catching a sword and dying there in the arena while begging the people to end this. Mm. And watching somebody willingly sacrifice themselves and calling for peace in the midst of violence caused the entire society to realize what was actually going on. Mm. And it was no longer profitable for the games to go on. And so they stopped. The gospel and a willingness to lay down our lives rather than take lives is what caused that to stop in a society that glorified violence. Yeah. That is what the church is called to. Yeah. Loving our enemies is the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. Seeking out the prosperity of our neighbors that call themselves our enemies is what we are called to. Man, it's, it's a, I would even go as far as like, it's so uncomfortable like to think about that guy you mentioned in that Coliseum, like what was going through his heart and mind is, you know what, this is probably going to kill me, but I know the Lord is true. And Jesus said it himself, fear not the one who can harm your body, mm-hmm. but fear the one who can destroy your soul. And it's hard. I would say it's hard to wrap your mind or submit yourself to that teaching because that's a it's a hard teaching you know jesus says all the time like blessed is the one who walks with me is not offended because jesus has a lot of hard teachings and he'll look at you and be like are you gonna leave and you know just like he did his disciples are you gonna leave he's gonna look at you like are you gonna leave now because it's too it's getting too hard is it getting too hot are you gonna leave and that offensiveness and then, is what makes it very difficult yeah for non-believers to have any chance of understanding yeah but it also is what makes it difficult for us as believers to even understand when we are not looking at the world from the perspective that we are called to look at it. Yeah. And so that's what, some of those offensive hard things is yeah. part of what we're going to continue talking about in the next couple of weeks. Again, Brandon's going to be back next week um, talking about, we're going to talk about wisdom. Yeah. Um, after that, in some order, we don't know exactly what order yet because, you know, how schedules are. Um, Joel Bowman is going to be back. Dr. Brian Hudson is going to be back, hopefully together. Maybe not. We'll have to see. Um, dealing with all of these ideas of what does this actually mean? Yeah. Why is this so difficult for us to understand? And what is it we're actually supposed to be understanding in the all first right. place? Um, we're also Joe, – Joe Day is going to be back here in a couple of weeks. Also, we're going to be talking about – this idea of even what Lent is all about as we get into that season, Mm -hmm. which again falls right back into what we just finished talking about in Philippians three and with the gospel as a whole. So stay tuned for all that. Again, schedules are going to be weird. Part of the reason they are going to be weird. And this is something for everybody just to be on the lookout for. Um, I start a new job here in the next, well, as you're listening to this, I would have started the new job. So my schedule has completely been upended. So, it is possible that instead of Tuesday mornings, you may start hearing us drop on Thursday morning, at least for the time being. We'll get it out when we get it out. It'll be either Tuesday or Thursday. So just be be patient with us. Be flexible with us. You know how how it, it goes when we try to plan things out. So life there's, no point, life in. <laughs> there's no there's no point in us trying to actually give you an exact thing because that's not going to end up happening if we yeah. try to do that. So um, just – be on the lookout, maybe Thursdays, maybe Tuesdays. We're going to shoot for Tuesday still, but some weeks it may be Thursday, depending on, on what's going on the rest of the week, everything like that. Um, there's also, so this is something that um, I just discovered 12 hours ago from when we're recording this, is that there is a, I don't know actually how new it is, it's new to me, new podcast platform for listening called Fountain that we are on. So if you are on Fountain, let us know. We're on there too. You can follow me on the social media side of it. If you don't know what it is, it's basically a typical podcast platform, except for that as you listen, you can earn Bitcoin. So oh, wow. yeah, not a lot of Bitcoin, but you right, can earn right, some right. Bitcoin. Um, and every time that you listen or share our show on there, Misfits also will get get some as well. So if you are on there or you're looking for another third-party platform, um, check that out. The link to our show is in the show notes. 
Um, if you are looking for a, another place to listen to podcasts and don't know where, the other place we always suggest you go is Good Pods. We're still on Good Pods. We are still the number one theology show on Good Pods. Um, go go check us out on there. Subscribe over there. Listen to us over there. You can add me as a friend over there also within social media, the social media side of it. Go check out Buddy Walk with Jesus on there also. Love Thy Neighbor on there also. Um, the three of us are in multiple separate categories. And the separate categories we are are all in, we are if not number one, we are in the top three for all of those different categories. So head on over there. You can check out all the network partners over there for the most part. Um, support the shows that way. Um, Good Pods is a, is a much easier way to connect with us if you want to connect on specific shows. Um, but it's also a little more, a little bit easier because it gets the algorithms moving a little bit faster than normal platforms. So Good Pods, you can get the link there as well. We're still on Patreon also. Patreon.com backslash Mr. Misfits. Um, if you join at any level, you will receive access to the Bible studies we're doing, access to early blogs, access to early episodes. Uh, well, no, only certain ones have access to early episodes. Okay. Only certain ones have access to some of the exclusive episodes as well. Um, we're hopefully going to be, we're in the planning stages of the next Bible study. We haven't figured out when we're going to actually be able to sit down and record them. I haven't. But we are going to, we're going to be walking through the book of Daniel, um, probably at a slow pace because there's a lot. It's too much. There's a lot in there. It's too much. <laughs> we won't even cover it all, but we're going to cover what we cover. We're going to, co- <laughs> we're going to cover what we cover. That's the, the, the misfits way is just we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. So um, check that out, patreon.com. Um, appreciate the support. You also can get access to backstage passes for the live streams like we did last week, all that good stuff. Um, other thing on the website, you can support the show if you want to get Misfits merch. Um, we've got some newer stuff on there. Um, we just got, we just found out that there's also a newer item that may be showing up here in the next week or so. Um, not sure if that's actually happening or not. Cause again, we never know what mm-hmm. we're being told is true or not. Um, and then so check all that out and check that out. There's also all the teak figure. Um, the teak figure, anything that you buy that's out of the Tikfa collection, the money goes to support the work that um Tikfa is doing, doing a lot of what we just talked about today, as far as loving, loving everybody, mm-hmm. loving our neighbor, treating those that need it with love and sharing the gospel in that manner. So I think we got through it. I think we did. I think so. It was, again, hopefully most of you are sitting there going like, "Why? what exactly was the controversial part? Because that's <laughs> kind of what we're sitting here still asking as well. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> in the meantime, let us know what you think. All the social media platforms at Mystery Misfit. Um, you can find Meek on, on X and everywhere as well. His stuff is, I think, in his... I don't remember if we got it up on your your portal yet or not, but you should be able to find his social media stuff here soon, if not already yeah. on the website. Also got a podcast. Um, first episode will be next Wednesday. Oh, nice. Um, it's yeah. called The Journey. Uh, so keep on the lookout for that. When I'll be dropping it, actually, the recording will be next Wednesday, but the actual dropping it, not sure yet. Uh, got a lot of editing to figure out. <laughs> um, yeah, once once it's ready, we'll let you know. We may and we will we'll, let, you we'll let you know where you can find all that good stuff. Yeah. So, in the meantime, we will see you next week. The Ministry Misfits podcast is a production of Ministry Misfit Media in association with Overwhelming Victory. Dr. Greg Linville and Andrew Fouts are our executive producers, and Brandon Simmons is associate producer. The Ministry Misfits theme song is written and produced by J.D. Laird and Laird Creative Agency. If you'd like to get in touch with us, you can email us at ministrymisfitmedia at gmail.com or by following at Ministry Misfit on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. You can also visit our website at www.ministrymisfits.com or through bio.link backslash ministrymisfits. If you would like to support Ministry Misfits, you can become a patron by going to patreon.com backslash ministry misfits. 